want to switch to scotch because I'm out of rum. Do you have any Irish whiskeys? Rod had a good question. Can you ask Kyle's thoughts on the audacity that a lot of ambitious newbies bring with them that makes them comfortable putting themselves out there even before they know shit? I think that goes back to what Sean was saying about grit, right? Like, there's a video I did in the old, old days. I used to just do videos in my car with my phone. I'd just sit on my phone and I'd just like fucking be like, hey, what is up, copy squad? And I'd go live and then I'd talk in my car. And one of the videos that I did was about being stupid and arrogant. I believe heavily in that idea that you should be stupid and arrogant. There was a book that gave us inside of Copy Camp called Obvious Adams, and it's like a 80-page like allegory of this fictional businessman named Adam. And Obvious Adams, he wanted to work at this business. He wanted to work at some sort, let's call it a manufacturing thing. He wanted to work at, you know, some manufacturing plant or something. And so when he decided he wanted to work there, what did he do? He walked into the front office of that business at their headquarters. And he said, hey, is Frank Thompson or whatever, the CEO, is Frank Thompson in? He asked the front desk lady. And she was like, yes, but he's in a meeting right now. He says, okay, when's that meeting over? And she says, uh, 20 minutes. Would you like to take a seat? And he goes, okay. So Obvious Adams sits down. Obvious Adams is a nobody. And he's going to go speak with the CEO of like one of the biggest like manufacturing companies. She says, okay, his meeting's over if you want to speak with him. And for whatever reason, the woman just thought he should be there, was meant to see this guy at this time because the way he was talking. So he goes in the office and the CEO's like, who are you? He's like, hey, my name's Adam. And he's like, what can I do for you, Adam? And he's like, I want to work here. And the CEO was like, well, you know, what do you want to do? And he's like, you know, I just, it's a good company. It seems nice. And I want to work here. So I think this would be a great place to have a job. And the CEO's like, the CEO was just taken aback. He's like so impressed with Obvious Adams. But the truth is, Obvious Adams is just doing the obvious thing. And a lot of people make this mistake. I'll get this question in my Discord at copysquad.net forward slash light, L-I-T-E. And I get this question in my Discord, like, should I start in the health niche and then write a couple of successful controls and then make my way over to the financial niche because I know financial is supposed to be harder or like this or like it's harder to get into this or this. And it's like, bro, if you want to write financial, why don't you start writing financial? Obvious Adams kind of shit. The CEO is talking to Obvious Adams and is sort of like he's sort of impressed with how bold or whatever he is but the reality is he just has the audacity to say i want that job i'm gonna go ask that guy for that job and a lot of copywriters talk about this audacity in this question a lot of copywriters trip themselves up by just uh you could call it lack of confidence but they overthink copywriters are a lot of times introverted analytical overthinking types a lot of times copywriters will think themselves into a corner into a pit sometimes it's audacity but sometimes it's just um, a security with yourself and really what it is dude just be dumb be be comfortable being stupid be comfortable falling on your face i'm gonna give this a shot like, I feel like I deserve it. Okay, so I promised on Reddit that I would ask Kyle's thoughts on uh, Stefan Georgie's thoughts on RMBC. So Stefan Georgie is a copywriter. He also is in this same space where he is both a copywriter, a business owner, but also like sells information about copywriting. So we're all operating in this space. Whoop, whoop, whoop. We're actually all going to go to a mastermind in Florida in October. Basically, a mutual friend of ours reached out to the 30 best copywriters that he knows in the world, and he invited them all to a mansion in Florida. His name's also Todd Brown. His name's Todd Brown. And I was invited, Kyle was invited. Stefan was also invited. Anyway, so RMBC stands for Research Mechanism Brief Copy. And really, all that is, if you buy Stefan Georgie's product, is you learn how he does research. You learn how he thinks of mechanisms. You learn how he prepares a brief for a client. You learn how he prepares the copy. So here's the difference between RMBC, Stefan Georgie's RMBC, and Kyle Milligan. With RMBC, it's a from soup to nuts, like, here's how you approach a copywriting project. And the last step in that process is the copywriting. Kyle's approach is the copywriting first. Copywriting is different. It's a different register than normal everyday speech. It uses different codes. It signals different things. What is going on at the sentence level, at the paragraph level, at the idea level? And how is it connecting with an audience? And he 
has taken that and morphed it into a process, a process for generating a lead. Stefan Georgi's RMBC method, it's really good for producing a lot of copy. It gives you a set process. But when you get to the C part of RMBC, actually writing the copy, I think it fails a little bit. And I think his stuff succeeds a great deal. Every single sentence of a piece of long form copy and short form copy is a code. It is sending you coded messages. And if you were receptive to actual sales messages, you would pick up on the fact that what is being said is not the only thing that's being said. That is the heart of what he teaches. I uh, bought RMBC and I went through the program. How was it? It was good, it was really good. I am a big process guy, like that does matter to me. RMBC, I like it for the fact that it is a process. Like it's a guy who codified what his process is and for that I have much respect for it. I will say that for me and financial copy, RMBC, doesn't necessarily make logical sense because RMBC is so detailed. It literally is like, hey, here's this line, this line, this line, this line, this line. And for me, I'm introducing concepts more in the way that Evaldo does with his 10 questions, which are the lead. There's four major questions in a sales letter. What's in it for me, which is your lead? How is Who the this, fuck are you? How is this possible? Yeah. And inside of how is this possible, you're going to introduce some sort of core origin story. Who are you? These sorts of pieces, like what's the problem? Who are you? And what's the force of nature behind this that's happening? So for P90X, I always use that as the easy one. The force of nature is muscle confusion. The mechanism are the exercises. How does it work? That's the mechanism section. Mechanism. So the this M is, in RMBC. Exactly. So what you can say is instead of trying to sell me on gold or the value of gold, or the current strike price or this or that, what you could say instead is, listen, in the last blah, blah, blah years, we've seen this much inflation. Recently, after 2020 and COVID, we saw the monetary Fed chart go like this. Show the chart. And then you can be like, what does this mean for you? It means for every dollar that you had that was this valuable, it just became this much less valuable. There's one thing that will never have that sort of influx or blah, blah, blah. You could tell like some sort of story and say, and that's gold. You don't have to sell me on gold. You sell me on inflation. And I'll say, well, how do I guard myself against this? That's what a force of nature is. Don't sell me on the mechanism. Sell me on inflation. And then I'll say, inflation is real, it's scary, and I need to get out of it. I need to figure out a safe haven. Now I will beg you for gold. Sell me on the force of nature, and I will demand your mechanism of you. And that's how I found success in my writing. One of the things that you need to keep in mind when it comes to copywriting is that everybody has desires, notions, and identities. Desires, hey, I want a lot of money. He just went to a conference where everybody was talking about like, hey, look at this mine. It's going to make a lot of money. Chart, 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 chart. They were speaking to the logical aspect of desire. They weren't understanding that monetary gain is attached to bigger desires that are attached to notions and identities. And notions about the world, what is true, and identities, do you fit into some sort of bigger piece of the world? And also, do you stand against some other aspect of the world? That's all part of it too. You have to be conscious as a copywriter of these things. If you want to be a super successful copywriter, you want to understand that like every single person has desires, notions, identifications that you need to tap into and you need to speak to in order to speak to them well, in order to sell what you were trying to sell, in order to convince them that you are the person that they are talking to. If you can signal what your prospect wants in your copywriting, you will get sales. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you found this valuable. And until next time, <laughs> peace out, Copy Squad. <laughs> peace out. People who love copy that, and I hope you're doing well. Have a wonderful weekend. I hope you have a wonderful That's your sign off? Life. I hope you have a wonderful fulfilling life too. Peace out, Copy Squad.